Welcome to this video, Residential Load Calculations Part 2. I'm doing this in a separate video because this is going to apply to single-family dwellings as well as duplexes or two-family dwellings along with multi-family dwellings. So it's going to get the whole shebang. And it says the additional 25% of the largest motor. Okay, so I'm going to take an actual example from my last video called Residential Load Calculation. As you can see here, I'm showing a screenshot of the final answer. With this, you can see we ended up with 33,705 volt amps there in the bottom right corner. And you also see the information leading up how we got there. Of course, watch that previous video if you haven't seen that, because this is part two. So everything from that video tells you what you need to know to get to that answer 33,705 volt amps. So now we want to find the total load for the house. And we're almost there. We're just one step away. I just wanted to make this in a separate video since this also does include the duplex and multifamily. So this will be a video you can come back to if you want to refresh the topic of 25% of the largest motor. Okay, so looking back at that screenshot, we can see we had three appliances of a disposal, a dishwasher, and a water heater. Since there's only three, we didn't have that demand factor in that calculation. But for this part, whether we did a demand factor or not in that part of the calculation, we're going to take the full load current of this appliance. Therefore, we see a disposal, a dishwasher, and a water heater. Now we want to find 25% of the largest motor. Okay, this doesn't mean the largest appliance with the motor, and this is where they might get you. So if we think about that logically, we want to find the largest motor. And obviously, we probably are going to think, okay, a garbage disposal is going to have the largest motor there. Therefore, we're going to use the 900 volt amps, and that would be correct. The thing is, someone might also say, well, doesn't a dishwasher technically have a motor in it? There's at least a few things spinning, okay? So there's probably some sort of motor in there. But that gets into the topic of the largest motor. So that's obviously not going to be the largest motor, though, because that just is a small little motor that's going to be turning the little water sprayer thing inside the dishwasher. So that's where it might get a little confusing, but just think, okay, what appliance actually uses a motor for its main function? That's mostly what this is going to be, or logically just think what has the largest motor in it. As we see, the dishwasher is 1,100 volt amps, so that's why I'm mentioning this. As I'm saying, since that would contain just little motors, we're not going to be thinking of that as the largest motor. Okay, so we're going to be taking the 900 volt amps from the disposal, and we're just going to multiply that by 25% which is 0.25, and we're going to get 225 volt amps. And now if we look back at the screenshot, since our final answer for everything that we did in that video was 33,705, and as you see, we get 33,930 volt amps. So now this is the answer for the total demanded load for that dwelling. And now why did I make this a separate video? Why did I not just include that in that video? And for first off, I think that video explained enough. That was a very long video. After you went through that, you're probably thinking, holy cow, I went through all that. And I really broke down a lot of stuff and explained it. So that's why it took so long. But I think that's going to save time for you compared to having to figure out a lot of that stuff on your own. I shared a lot of good tips with you in that video. Okay, so I didn't want to add too much stuff in one video. And that video had a certain dynamic to it, which was me reading out of the code book and then applying that to the video. And of course, there is a rule in the code book for the 25% of the largest motor. But in all reality, it's pretty simple. You just got to know that after you do everything else in your load calculation, at the very end is how I do it because there's all the demand factors and stuff. I just look at what is my largest motor and I take 25% of that and I add that to the rest of the load. So now this is kind of weird because no matter how many units you have, you're only going to add this one time. So this means if I had a duplex, we had two units on the same feeder, and we came up with this answer, 33,705 volt amps. And the same thing, it had a disposal that was the 900 volt amps. We multiplied the 25% and we ended up with 225. Okay, well, it's a duplex. We'd probably do that twice then. No, you don't do it twice. You only do it one time. So no matter if there's two units, you're always going to add it one time. Let's say we had a multifamily dwelling. We had 11 units. Okay, same thing. We ended up with a certain number and we're only going to take the largest motor one time and add that at the very end. And okay, I'm not going to explain that all through calculations in this video because I'm going to make a video for duplex 
and for multifamily, and we're going to see me adding the 25% of the largest motor one time at the end of those videos. So you'll see how I do it. You'll be able to actually see it in the calculation, and you'll be able to confirm that what I'm saying is making sense to you. And you'll see that basically, like I'm saying, it's the same thing always. You're going to just take the largest motor, 25% of that, add that one time, no matter how many units you have. To that final number that you got and then the next thing to really comprehend here is that this is for the standard method only that you're going to be doing the 25 percent of the largest motor with the optional method you don't do this okay make sure to know your optional method for your duplex in your multifamily as well it's kind of weird compared to doing your standard method so i'm gonna have videos on all this so look out for those those will be coming out in the near future it's really that simple all you're gonna do is look at your appliances not including your dryer and your range, of course, because those are separated in the H-A-R-D calculations explained in that last video. But other than that, the other fixed appliances in the house are the appliances with a dedicated circuit home run. We're going to look at those and we're going to take the one that has the largest motor, not just the one that has the largest volt amps and contains a motor, but the one with the largest motor. We're going to take that at its full load. Whether we did the demand factors with the four or more or not, we're going to take it at face value without any demand factors. And then we're going to multiply that by 0.25. So 25% of it, that number, like I showed you, is going to get added on the total load that we calculated other than that one final calculation. So that's why I do it at the very end. And you're going to see in my next videos, I'll just show you that I basically get the total load for the house and then I add the 25% of the largest motor and that is the entire demanded load for that house. Okay, now that we know our total full amps, the total demanded load for that unit, now what size overcurrent protection device can we use for this and what size wires can we use with that? Okay, so to do that, we're going to get our number 33,930. And we're going to divide it by 240. Since for residential, if you look at the panel, we have an A phase and a B phase. Okay, and we come up with 141. And remember, we had volt amps. We're dividing the volts, so we're left with amps. Okay, so now that we have 141 amps, we can now go over to table 246.A and find our standard amper rating for fuses and time circuit breakers. Okay, we see 125 and 150. Now we gotta tell ourselves and understand the fact that we're using a breaker here. So if we upsize the breaker, then we're saying that we're gonna allow more current to be allowed to be supplied to those wires because the breaker is going to tell us how much current we can put on those wires. So logically speaking, we'd probably size down. But the thing is, if you've done this enough times, you know that you normally size up. Now we have to ask ourselves, why are we sizing up if we're looking for an overcurrent protection device? This is supposed to be protecting us from overcurrent. So we should probably size to the current that we have and not more than that since it's supposed to be protecting from overcurrent. Now that would be true, except for certain exceptions found in the code book. We're going to flip a page back and we're going to go to article 240.4, protection of conductors. We see under B, overcurrent devices rated 800 amperes or less. Okay, so highlight this and remember this, 800 amperes or less. So the first rule is that the conductors that are being protected are not a part of a branch circuit that are supplying more than one receptacle. Okay, and that's talking about the actual conductors being protected. So in basically all situations, you don't really need to think about that. But then the second one is probably the most important here, other than the 800 amps. And that is that the impacity of the conductors does not correspond with what they call a standard amper rating. This is a course of a fuse or a circuit breaker. Okay, so that's where when we're looking at table 246.A, we saw the 125 and we saw the 150, but we're dealing with 141. And as I was explaining, it would make logical sense to size down to 125 since we're doing an overcurrent protection device. And this is actually going to enable how much current is going to be on these wires. And if we put this all together with the part three, which is just saying that the next size that we're going to size up to does not exceed 800 amps, 
we can see that in most cases here, we're going to be sizing up our breakers. Okay, and again, I keep saying it, but that's if it's not exceeding 800 amperes. So let's go over that one more time. I found my amps for my house. I'm going to table 246.a and I see 125 and 150. Now there's no mention about the conductors being a part of some branch circuit supplying an outlet that's kind of specific. So the first part, we don't need to think about so much. But the second part is that it doesn't correspond with a standard rating. Okay, so we obviously see 141 is in the middle of 125 and 150. This is what it means as it doesn't correspond with a standard size. What you see in this table are the standard sizes. So if it fits in one of these standard sizes, you're going to pick that number and you're not going to size up to the next one. So it's basically saying if you're in the middle of two numbers here, 125 and 150, we have 141, then you're gonna size up to your next size if that next size is not exceeding 800 amps. And you can just flip a page back to remind yourself of this. If you can't quite remember, okay, 800 amps, it's right there, the page before it. Okay, so that's how I know that now we're sizing this up to 150 amps for our circuit breaker. And now with this, we can figure out what size conductors we're gonna use with that circuit breaker. Okay, now when we're thinking about residential here, we're not going to be using table 310.16. That does tell us the impacity of conductors. But if we go back to article 310.12, single phase dwelling services and feeders. Okay, so we see single phase, in other words, residential. You got to know some things in the code book. When they're talking about houses, multifamily, duplex, or single, they're going to use the word dwelling. And if they're talking about commercial, which is not a dwelling, what you're often going to find is non-dwelling. Okay, and along with that, you're often going to have single phase for your dwellings, and you're going to have three phase for your commercial. Looking at article 310.12b, feeders. We see this talks about a feeder rated 100 amps to 400 amps. We see it mentions that the conductors that supply the one family, two family, or multi-family dwelling shall be permitted to have an opacity that is not less than 83% of the rating. Okay, and in most cases, you're just going to be using table 310.12 because that shall be permitted to be applied if there are no adjustment or correction factors. Okay, so most of the time you're just going to be using table 310.12. We see it says single phase dwelling services and feeders. It goes all the way from 100 amps to 400 amps because, of course, that is the limit for this table. We had a 150 amp breaker that was the standard size and of course we see that here in table 310.12. Now 150 amps is going to give us number one copper or two aught alumina and you can see that here in this table. You could also look it up on Google and you'll see that's why you get that answer that is not from table 310.16. Okay so that's it for this video. The main point was the 25% of the largest motor but I thought I'd also tie in the other things as well because, of course, that's important. And I'm not explaining the duplex and the multifamily with all the calculations and the numbers, but I'm going to have separate videos for those. So look out for those and you'll see explanations of the 25% of the largest motor being added one time at the end. It probably makes perfect sense for you, but you can watch those videos when they come out and you can see if what I'm saying is clicking with you, if you made sense of what I said, and it'll just make you feel more confident when you're actually filling out those answers. At that point, there's nothing in the back of your mind telling you that, am I doing this correctly? Or maybe I don't quite know something. Okay, so it's really good to be sure of yourself. That's going to ensure that you can actually do the questions not only quicker, but if you're stressed out, then you're going to be sure of yourself and that is extremely important again we're only going to be doing this for the standard method and no matter how many dwellings that we have we're only going to be adding the 25 percent of the largest motor one time no matter how many houses dwellings that we have so that's it for this video if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up share with people that you think will enjoy it maybe on social media and make sure to subscribe to see more videos and don't be afraid to ask me any questions i'd love to help out and i regularly check this channel to see if there's anyone asking me any questions okay so i don't have anything more to say so until next time take care and goodbye